Hello, everybody. Um, all right, everything looks good. Looks all right, anyway. Today, we are going goblin mode. <laughs> and we're trying out a new Turbo Nexus list. <clears throat> um, so I originally got this idea from... One second. I realize it's it's been a little while since I've played. I've been away uh, for a couple of weeks. Scrolling through MTG Goldfish real quick. I think this is it. Yeah. So, a couple weeks ago, uh, Andrew from kind of the Goblins community got third place with this deck list in a legacy challenge and we got two Agatha soul cauldron so soul cauldron is kind of a weird card uh, but so if people haven't seen it before two mana artifact legendary artifact you may spend mana as though or mana of any color to activate abilities of creatures you control um, is that does that mean you can use c c colorless mana to pay for battlecry goblin I just hadn't thought about that be kind of cool if so. Um, creatures you control with plus one plus one counters on them have the activated abilities of all creatures exiled with Agatha Soul Cauldron. Um, and then you can tap exile target card from a graveyard. When a creature card is exiled, you, get a, you can put a plus one plus one thing. Plus one plus one counter on a thing. So the idea basically is that you get to... Like, whenever your Bombardiers die, you can just exile your own Bombardiers. Bombardiers are about a cry specifically, and I, uh, Prospector as well. You can, you know, turn your tokens or your matrons or your whatevers into extra copies of Bombardiers. And then it's also um, extra graveyard hate, effectively. Still counters reanimate and all that sort of stuff. So it's worse than unlicensed tears at being graveyard hate, but it does other things as well. Uh, so that's that's the idea. So I was intrigued by this, and so I wanted to try my own version. Uh, the thing I made, the main thing I saw is I was like, well, let's see if we can get some more plus one plus one counters on this. And so I got a four Legion War Boss over the Rebel Masters. Since that'll naturally, like, if you can play Soul Cauldron and then like have a uh, You know, something with a counter on it already in play uh, is pretty nice. And plus, I, I do want to try War Boss over Owl Master just to see, like, does the non full attack clause help compared to the lower damage output? Um, so, yeah, that's basically the core idea of what I'm testing here. We've got a dead gun to go with our three prior kinesis because uh, I keep seeing doorkeeper thralls and people sideboards and main decks and I'm like mm, that makes me worried. Um, it's also good against Triumph of Saint Catherine and like Merc Tide, which is showing up in a lot of the blue mid range decks. Not that you really want to bounce them because they're usually bean stock decks, but if you you know bounce and then hit them for eight, then it's worth it. Um, rest of the sideboard's pretty normal. The rest of the deck is pretty normal. So, haven't played Turbo in a good long while at this point. Um, so, I'm curious to see how this goes. And as far as the stream goes and kind of content stuff, I'm trying to stream a little bit more. I have, I have a lot of grading to do this week, so this will be my stream 
this week, and then I'm hoping to stream again probably twice next week. Uh, and I'm also hoping... Uh, well, I did a poll on the Patreon uh, about what I should do next. And people really want a vile... Like, the majority of responses was wanting the vile goblins primer to get an update. So that's going to take a long time because it's quite a big document. There's a lot to say. So I'm not going to do that next, but I'm going to have that kind of working on the background over time. Um... Yeah, sure. Um, and then other stuff. Oh, I'm going to get a new microphone because this the, the, the Yeti is kind of dead. So I'm not using it. it really, something's dead about it. Or it's just inconsistent. And also, you know, just want better audio quality, I think. Um, do I play the Shatter Skull? I think I do because I actually want six mana sources. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get a new mic at some point soon. Okay. Oh, that's never good. Notably, do not have Null Rod in this, in this deck. So we don't need two ringleaders. One should be enough. Okay, name sticker matron's pretty good. Each for two. If this is like Tony Scapone deck, then we have very little for this matchup. We can probably win next turn if we get a next turn, but I kind of feel like we're not going to get a next turn. And if there's like a one ring lock that happens, I can't really get out of that either because I don't have a Pashlik. Volcanic Island. Uh... Yeah, it's Jewel, okay. Mm-hmm. Metamorph. Mm-hmm. Okay, you got four mana. One ring. If you play one ring, you lose all your jewels. Okay. This is a weird deck. It's a very weird deck. Probably, yeah, I'm dead here. Okay, I can draw their whole deck. No Pyroblasts. No Null Rods. So we kind of have to board in our bad cards and hope that they're good. Chalice, in this case, counts as a bad card. Uh, yeah, just cut Jumpstone Caverns, run it back. It's 
So we can Chalice on one, Chalice on zero. I have two Battle Cries as follow ups. I can pitch the Blood Moon. I think that's probably okay. And I think pitching Blood Moon is better. Just because two Battle Cries kind of present a good clock by themselves. I guess I should have played Chalice on one first, because if they force that, I might save this for Chalice on... Yeah, it just can never beat Grim Monolith. It's just uh, kind of impossible. <laughs> okay, well, that could have been worse. <clears throat> That's what you spend your forcible on? This chalice is a lot worse than I thought. Don't you brainstorm in your deck? One ring. Transmute. Okay. Okay, so that's six mana, eight mana. Maybe I was supposed to hold a chalice to play chalice on two. If I had like drawn an ancient tomb. This matchup is very, very bad for Turbo Nexus. Served me right for cutting Mulrod in leagues. Okay. Sure. All right, land. Damn it. So I guess they can loot. Given they have like a billion mana, they tap the. Okay, well, they lose the monolith then. Do you have Lightning Bolt in your deck? <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? I do not understand. Yeah, huh? Hey Jared, thanks for the the sub, man. Appreciate it. Metamorph. Okay. Pretty sure we lethal if we draw a mana source that isn't Chromox. But Pun has five cards in hand and nine mana, so seems unlikely we are going to get a turn here. Okay, ten mana. The 
The lightning bolt's really throwing me. I, I'm just like, why? <laughs> Of all the things that could have happened, <laughs> that's like among the least scary. It's just dismember. Maybe? Otawara? Sure. Uh, yeah, kind of need to attack. It would actually be in pretty reasonable shape I could draw a mana source. I mean, they are at seven. Effectively at four, but they'll probably play another ring. So that is the entire deck. Mm-hmm. Oh, they can get engine, yeah, and then cast any spell and I lose. Yeah, okay. Cool. Horrendous matchup, drew bad. Anyway, oh, this is a Chrome Hux, of course. Not something I am too worried about. Still the, the lightning bolt. What? Why? <laughs> why? Is it like a collector of concern? Maybe? I feel like the whole point of I don't know, doesn't that deck have enough protection with the forces? Maybe not. <laughs> okay, this is this is good. And keep and bottom city. This is gonna be a Muxus line, so we're gonna pitch the battle cry. Name sticker and opponents gotta gotta do something. Okay, uh, so probably not a combo deck. I'm just gonna run it back. Because if that works, then the matchup is probably good, and so I probably don't need my sideboard cards. 
There might be some that I want. Like if it's a creature map matchup, I could regret not having Pyrokinesis in my deck. Like if it's like um, Cradle or something like that. Um, hey, no, Jask. this hand because we've got like ancient tomb pass matron for name sticker yes i'm trying out war boss because of soul cauldron putting counters on things becomes more valuable and also i, I am curious if the must attack must attack clause matters if i mulligan to six i think i will also mulligan to six okay So we put back mm. Okay. I guess opponent went to five and didn't want to play but alright. This has been sort of a nonsense. I'm probably gonna run the league after this just because this, this is sort of dumb. <laughs> opponent was just off of it. Like, we kind of got killed by matchup round one, and we literally have no idea what opponent was doing in round two, so. Classic win the match without seeing a single card. <laughs> so in that spot, I think I was going to be putting back the spirit guide. And then I'd go Gemstone, Ditch, Warchief, play Mountain, turn to play Matron for Battlecry or Moxus, depending on what I draw. Fetch all spells, get Battlecry, fetch all mana sources, get Moxus. And then I can stick around Moxus. I think that's probably what I'd be doing. Okay, maybe we'll play an actual game. All right, Yorion is probably... I guess DNT just won the challenge, didn't it? So DNT is a lot more likely. This hand... Uh, cast turn broad broadside, and then does nothing. Okay. This hand is... It's kind of scary. So we draw up. We keep. We draw up seven cards. We go Mox, pitch a card. I think I have to ditch the War Chief. Yeah. Flagstones. Okay. Okay, broadside's not bad. I think I just kind of YOLO this. I just hit six. Man. I 
If I had one more mana source, then I would have waited. Port, okay. Battlecry is good for support. No! If I'd waited, then the sticker gets swords, so. No blocks, love to see it. All right, so I need my opponent to not port me, and then I draw another soul land or a sticker. Okay. I want my broadside back. Maybe I was supposed to just pitch the Muxus. No, don't scry clip my Chrome box. Don't do it. Fuck. <laughs> All right, we need to draw. <laughs> I guess we can still draw another sticker, but opponent should really just be porting me forever now. They presumably don't have a lot of lands because, yeah, because they're playing out these. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have a lot of time, is the, the one good thing. That's a good draw. Ancient Tomb, powerful magic. That was a really dangerous thing they just did. Um, cost me four life to play that. And there's nothing to do with it. I don't think it's worth four life. It would be worth two, but the Thalia makes it a little pricier than I want it to. Okay. Yorian to hand. But if they want to play Yorian, they do have to stop porting me. Okay. Yeah, if they attack with Spear, I'll block with the Goblin token. Um, yeah, I can take four. Hopefully they port the Shatter Skull again. That makes my draws better, I think. I shouldn't have said it.
Somewhat obnoxiously, Chromox is a bad draw. So I got a nine. I can take like one more hit. Come on, mountain. Okay, that works. Unless they've drawn plow. Let's go! <clears throat> Opponent has accepted death. All right, that was close. <laughs> it's a little, a little hairy. All right, but we've got some good cards here. So Salt College against DNT. Your stuff gets exiled a lot. I'm not in love with the war bosses against DNT. But I want to keep up Goblin Count. So I think Cauldron... They also have a lot of incidental graveyard hate, like uh, Lance Hash or whatever. <laughs> so I think I'm doing this. Chromox is also quite bad, but I think most of the time when you lose against DNT it's because of mana issues. But Mox is undeniably bad against the Flicker Wisp, you know, Skyclave deck. It's just like if you're if you play at your Mox early and then they like counter your thing with like a Solitude or Plow, or you know they just gum up the board uh, and the game stalls out for a little bit and then they can start Skyclaving your mana. It, that's that's a, I mean that's what happened last game. And that's why we almost lost. I get that's like, in that instance, it was fine because we needed that mana anyway. Um, but like, ad any additional chrome boxes would have been really bad draws. Um, and there's plenty of time where, like, with chrome box, where you use the mana from it like once or twice, and then you stop needing it as you make additional land drops. Um, uh, that's not really the point. I'm kind of I'm kind of explaining this poorly. Okay, we got the gemstone caverns. We can, oh, we can kill a turn one mom. That's kind of nice. So I think I'll pitch the prospector. Because we'll want sticker into ringleader as our action. I really like just the goblin mode across the, the bottom here. It's making me happy. Oh, I've got this sweater for me. It's very, very fitting. Pounce on five. And we have a pretty good hand, so... Bing. Now, Prospector is one of the better cards in the matchup, so... No, either way. Well. That's right. Hmm. I was going to hold up Dead Gone for Stoneforge Mystic, but... So now they poured us, it's sort of a decision of, do I believe I'm going to top deck Ancient Tomb? I think I'll just pump Battlecry and play Mountain. <laughs> it's still fine, though. It's, like, less explosive, but it's still fine. 
Oh, I gotta not turn off auto yields because they might have mom. Drawn pretty well here. Now, do I need to go sticker into ringleader, or can I just play ringleader? There's a chance the mana gets wasted if I play sticker. But it's also a good opportunity because they're tapped out and the vial's on two. It's a pretty good shot. I get to use the mana here. Okay, much less of a shot now. Yeah. Some regret. I wonder if they'll trade. I guess that wouldn't make sense. I, I mean, it kind of makes Bomber Years worse, but... Sitting on this dead gun feels really good. Just really reduces the chances of things going horribly wrong. Now we did see Flagstone, so Cataclysm has to be on the mind a little bit. If they cast Cata here, I'd keep Mountain Ringleader, kill the Skyclave. Would I kill the Skyclave? Probably. Kill the 2-2, two -two, get a 2-2. Two -two. It's a decent trade. Port the tomb. Oh my god, alright. Some very good draw steps. Good ring leader. Send in the boys. Oh, uh... Xi Wang and Pedro Camus, thanks for the follow. Miss that. My follower notifications aren't working for some reason. What this? Uh, do I pyrokinesis this? And if so, pitching what? I guess I could pitch the dead gun. Yeah, I guess I can pitch the dead gun. Nothing else matters. Like, if I just get both of these, I don't see. Well, again, I guess I can get Cataclysm next turn. That would suck. Yeah, this, this is a very tough matchup for TNT for sure. Pun at multi five, and we had pretty strong draw. No cauldroning yet. Slightly disappointing. <clears throat> All right. 
Last scene on goblins. Chalice goblins. Okay. Ugh. I mean, this plays a turn one war boss, but like eats my hand. I'm on the draw. I don't really like this. Uh, you know, I ha you know what? I'm actually gonna keep this and dish the second Muxus. If we draw a Chromox or another Spirit Guide, it's a turn two Muxus. Um, and if we draw a Sticker, it's a turn two Muxus. Draw a Mountain, it's like a perfectly good hand. Hello. <laughs> it's all according to plan. Don't kill me, please. Okay, we're good. That was underwhelming. I want my second Muxus back. Throw Rabble at Muxus, maybe? Okay. I'll, I'll double block. I've got another. Yeah, let's ring leader. War chief matron. Okay. Do I break my city? So I could break city. Actually, I wonder if I... I think I just sack my board and cast Matron, keep the city, uh, and get Muxus again. I lose out three damage. But I think that's fine. See, in the Goblin's Mirrors, you gotta really keep in mind what matters. And what matters is Muxus. They got a ringleader. Okay. It's a pretty good ringleader. They don't, they're low on mana though. Okay, uh, am I allowed to take this four? If I take this, f if I block here, I go to 11, I go to nine. I 
I gotta be wary of Broadside just being able to throw Ringleader and kill me. So I think I block. Even though I am going to try to win the game this turn. Hopefully I can hit a sticker and then I can cast a... Vilex or Vilzez. Okay, I'm still in an okay spot. Like Battlecry Activate doesn't do that much. Bombardiers doesn't do that much on this board, and they kind of need to bombardiers my bombardiers. Yeah. I'm not playing a challenge, uh, no. So I'll take one. They clear that. They just take a lot of damage next turn. Oh, I wonder, I could have maybe just, this might be lethal. Yeah, okay, yeah, I should have kept my... My guy. So this is uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15. Yeah, okay, I punted. Uh, so let's attack like this, hold back Warchief. That's unfortunate pun. I should have just done the math. Mm hmm. Okay. All right, that was close. That was close. Soul Cauldron should actually be pretty good in the mirror because it makes Pyrokinesis a lot worse. Um, oops. Uh, maybe I don't need the Trash Master. Yeah. Yeah, just having extra copies of Bombardiers and Battlecry should be decent. Uh, so this does turn one. This is turn three Muxus, but we're more on the draw. I think I can. I think I have to Mulligan actually. This is a lot worse. Okay. Need all of our red cards, so... Do that. Okay. 
It's going to be a little tricky to support mocks this game. We need to draw like a matron or a ringleader, then we can be okay. Surprised there isn't they aren't pitching something else and playing the battle cry. Uh now do I go Mox pitch guide battle cry? Battle cry? And I can't pirate Jesus. So I think I just again sit on the box. Yeah, maybe they have a pyrokinesis. It's a reasonable call. If I draw any red card, I can battle cry with double token next turn. If I draw a land, it's a decent shot of being a red land. Magic card. All right, sticker, really juicy draw. Um, mountain, <laughs> also very good. I don't think I play the city. Pawn's gonna pyrokinesis me, yeah. Interesting. Do I just hold this as a red card? So that I can play a Moxus if I top deck it. I go to 11 points at 18. I could play the city, but that seems kind of bad. I think mana burn isn't a thing anymore. Ringleader. Shatter. Oh, maybe uh, Shatter Skull. That would explain kind of. Their, their hand being all the mana, yeah. That would kind of explain uh, how this is going. Okay. I think I just hold Prospector as a red card. That's kind of the same. Actually, yeah, I could just play. Soul Cauldron is a reason to uh, don't top deck green leader. Fuck. Okay, they had sticker, nothing else. OK. 
Come on, Moxus. Or Matron or Ringleader. Oh no. Well, hopefully this is Grey Ogre. Oh, that's... Okay, I mean, yes, it is Grey Ogre, but Grey Ogre's <laughs> very close to killing me. So... Yeah, I have to draw something this turn. I guess we found a use for Chrome Mox. So attack. Throw that. Block. Go to two. Or go to. Th I'll go to three. Moto lagging out a little bit. Yeah, I want to keep my Ancient Tomb alive. Mm -hmm. All right, Maxis. Damn. <laughs> ah, never luck. Uh, I mean, the way they played out, pretty. Let's cut gemstone, get a war boss in. Trash Master would also be legitimate. Mm. This is one of those games where you really wish you were playing paper. <laughs> This is an ancient tomb. I would definitely go for it. User ten thinks of the hollow. If we roll a four, we just play broadside and probably lose. If we roll, if we roll a five, we can do cauldron plus broadside. But the removal is pyrokinesis, so like, it doesn't really do anything. Okay, I like this more. Even though it's still not very good. I think I... Do I bottom the cavern? And then just lead on Shatter Skull because I need a true red source? It's a lot of damage to myself. Could also bottom the city. Lead on Cavern. Hmm. Kind of interesting. Having two red sources is also kind of nice. I think this is the line. I don't want to rely on the Prospector as my red source because it's either going to die or I'm going to throw it with the Bomber to use. Okay. Mm, not my favorite. I don't think I'm playing Bombardiers this turn. I think I want to battle cry first.
don't love how this is playing. Yeah, I'm dead, okay. Yeah. What? Okay. Oh, I'm so dead. Jesus Christ, okay. Well, never ever winning that game without <laughs> Parkinson's or dead gone, so it doesn't matter. That was a nasty Muxus. Jesus Christ. One, two, three, four, five. And they're like all insane. You know, the whiff was another Muxus. Cauldron has not done anything. It's been pretty bad, actually. Like, I've drawn it and never wanted to cast it. But granted, we've played three matches. <laughs> Wizard shits, thanks for the sub. Uh, played three matches. And... It was like... Jewel, where nothing matters. Uh, DNT, which exiles all your stuff. And the mirror. I thought it would be okay in the mirror, but it, it's not a red card. Which is a pretty big deal. As it turns out. Designed to play file, yeah. Yeah, but I would have been fine that game. Just go something into Expert or Jump Palm or Port. Stop the sticker. What the heck is my hair doing? All right, on the draw. Gemstone Cavern. Gemstone Cavern. No gemstone, but sounds pretty good. It's D and D. Ooh, war boss. That's pretty good. Uh. Hmm. Pluto Delta means a lot of different things. Huge inflection point, inflection point in whether or not I use my Chromox to, to Chromox out the Legion War Boss, or do I just play Skirk? I think I'm actually going to do this, and I'm going to pitch the Skirk. I'm going to stifle my Chrome Mox. Hughes, thanks for the follow. Days it. Deal. Well, that makes my decision way easier. <laughs> Grief, I mean, uh, war boss here. 
Our Battlecry does not have a red source anymore, which is a little sad. Drawing second Moxus is also not good, but... I mean, if we draw a Spirit Guide, then we cast it next turn. We're, we're uh, another Chromox, so that's something. So Mountain's a really good draw. Fast Man is a good draw. Rain Leader's a good draw. So it's Bug. Sure. So we get a full turn of War Bossin. Nice. Draw a card, yep. Pay one life, discard a card. Discard two cards, draw a card. Stone dead from there. Okay. Bug beans. So Blood Moon's good. I do normally like Leyline against Bug Beans. Um but I do have Soul Cauldron. Dead Gone is not good. Yeah, I, I think I... Well, Soul Cauldron. I'll try the Soul Cauldron because normally part of the Leyland... So Leyland stops Murktide and Murderer's Cut, which is good. But it also stops... I guess uh, Witherbloom Command can kill... Agatha's... So... I don't know what I want to do, actually. Like, Leyline slows down their ability to clock you so much. Like, the games just drag on super long if you have a Leyline. Which is pretty nice. I'm going to trim one Moxis. Even though it is really hard for them to beat, it's just on the draw. You 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 kind of kind of need to account for curve. Maybe we shape a prospector. I guess maybe. I I just I want to try the soul cauldrons, right? Man, <laughs> the hand's actually almost keepable. All right, this hand's pretty good. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'm just to keep double cavern. Cavern's so good against them. Jamming to Forcible really hard on turn one is important because it means uh, that when they force you, they don't have a, a Beanstalk in play. Beat an Archon and a Grizzlebrand in game one versus Black or Dreaminer. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Jared. All right, as long as we can dodge a Wasteland on this turn. No, I mean, if they play Wasteland, like, 
think he just sort of resets. Because then they're not going to be able to make any forward progress with Island. Yeah, okay. And now Witherbloom Command is two turns away, so... Any mana sources? It's not my favorite mana source, but I'll take it. I'm gonna force all my chrome box. Okay. Uh, I kind of need. Uh, it's kind of tough. Bombardiers or ringleader. Opponent's got five cards to my two, so I kind of I think I kind of need the the ringleader. Edict or cut. Dismember. Okay. Well, they missed their stops. So that's nice. I take the free token. Murktide could happen next turn, but it would be only be a 5 5. Yeah. Bowmaster, sure. Alright, pretty happy with my choice to keep the ringleader now. Cauldron. Turned on a forcible that would have been blank. Okay. If there's no merc side, I'm I'm in really good shape. I feel like you wouldn't necessarily force that pitching Lauren revealed unless you had a merc type. Opponent could have Mystic Sanctuary, so I want to be like, what card do I want to kind of make them draw, so to speak? So that'd be Force of Will. Oh, they're just gonna fetch. Okay. I didn't care if they draw Hydroblast. Not certain that I do. I care if they have Wasteland, but they clearly don't have Wasteland. I guess I'll, I, I'll, I'll care. Okay. 
Now, sadly, my Bombardiers is under Chrome Mox. Alrighty. Not thrilling. It's something, but okay. It's a five five, we can kill that. That's a pretty good draw. Uh, nope. Hold on. <laughs> because now we do this. Oh, that was that was a mistake. Uh, actually, hold on. No, it's not. Four plus. Okay, so we let this go through. We throw Chrome Mox. Yeah, I know I can pump the Bombardier, but I want the Bombardier to die. So go to eight. Yeah. And then. Uh. Oh, this isn't going to work the way I want it to, huh? Yeah, I... Mm. So, what I want to do is... Yeah, I'm one short. Right, but I can't do that yet. So, right. I could just put them to one. Why do I just pass? I think I just pass. I don't want to sack anything. I kind of, I fucked that up. Cauldron's a tricky card. I should have killed the Merktide pre-combat the last turn. So what I should have done is I, I attack, sack Ringleader to kill Merktide, and then if they go to double block, 
uh, then I tap Cauldron, exile a thing, put a plus one plus one counter on the Bombardiers, and then the Bombardiers eats the, the Bowmaster, and I, I keep it. Okay. Weird 3-2. Alright, so, I mean, that was... It's a, it's a hard card to play with, but it was good-ish, that game. It did turn on a Force of Will that otherwise would have been blank, which is not my favorite. We countered a Mystic Sanctuary, which didn't, which was like, you know, okay in that. I mean, yeah, it was, it was good that game. It was good. It was worse than, I feel like Unlicensed Hearse would have been better, because it just would have been like a 6-6, six, six, and I could have just attacked them to death with that, and it also would have shrunk the Murktide more effectively. Warboss was okay. Um, not really appreciably different from Rebel Master in any of the spots we had. I'll just run it back, because I feel like that was sort of a... a weird league. And the card felt like... I don't know. You definitely set it out a lot. It doesn't feel like there's quite enough activated abilities. Or there's like not enough, maybe it's there's not enough fodder, or like your fodder is too taxed. It's like you're sacrificing stuff to bombardiers and prospectors, and stuff's dying naturally just from like combat and removal. And so you don't have that many things just sort of laying around. It's not like you have like a Mog War Marshal to just kind of be f filler on the table. Um, I'm missing follows. Uh, Quirts and Mush 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 thanks to the follows. Kind of a, a tricky, a tricky thing. Sixty one cards. Sixty one card Omnitel. What? Huh? No. Okay. Four One Ring Four Drive. Okay, this deck looks like a nightmare. But all they play is Omnitel. It's a little, I don't know. No, no, no. Okay, that's just showing all the different Omnitels. <laughs> all right. Surely, we will top deck. Right, I'm gonna bottom the second four boss. Because if it is a show and tell deck, I do want Luxus in my hand. It is not a show and tell deck. Okay. A cast. Painter. All right, third mana source is important. Now, regular beatdowns aren't really going to work versus German or Zasaka. So I kind of need to keep the Muxus. So I think I pitch Warboss, because Warboss doesn't do anything once Shadow Spear gets involved. So I think I have to get Skirk here, because I think my problem is that I need to be the Counterspell. So if I get Sticker, I think I just lose, uh, unless I hit exactly 6 and they don't Forcible. So this this way what happens is they're going to get Shadow Spear. 
I'm gonna have to take two big hits. I'm gonna because I'm gonna go Skirk pass, and then play Muxus on the next turn. Mm-hmm. It'd be really good for me if they don't have an Ancient Tomb. Mm-hmm. Oh, I kind of have to block, don't I? I can wait one turn on the block. That's a really bad draw. Yeah, these matchups, I I hate I hate playing against eight casters to Remoxus. I think the matchup is like quite poor. Just because eight eight construct with Jada Spears, like you can only beat it with Muxus. And if you become one-dimensional that way, it's just really shit. Oh, they don't attack with both? If they don't attack with both, then I'm okay. Then I can still cast Muxus without having to draw anything. Yeah, okay, they realize. Alright, and you draw a little mana source and Muxus to hit very well. Okay, Grindstone's really fucking good to know about. Alright, that's a good mana source. Uh, now, do I keep Skirk or do I keep Battlecry? I think I keep Skirk because I have two Skirks and I have four Battle Cries. Hmm. Kind of filled with regret. I didn't consider name stickers a factor there. Alright, so I need to dodge Force of Will here now. Hey, John. Dispute. Okay. I'll pay three, very, very sadly. Pepe casts Pepe target and cater, and cater and casts cater. <laughs> Wow, okay. Uh, it's not 26 damage, so we're dead, but almost good enough. Yeah, it's just... Sagas just ruin your entire... Oh, oh this is Painter, right? So uh, I have to board a little differently. Salt Cauldron's not bad. Shuts down uh, this extra trash master, which is nice, and it shuts down um, Emery. So again, war bosses are really useless. Trim two ringleader, one Muxus. Skirk. Maybe I don't need all three pyrokinesis, but against the painter deck, I kind of think I I need that. Okay. This is sort of force checky.
fuck. <laughs> well, we lose. Mostly. Draw a matron. This deck probably wants a fourth matron, huh? Also, maybe should have considered Chalice because uh, they're going to have a bunch of Hydro Blasts. This card's not really impressing me. I guess I will eat the force of will. Fucking kidding me. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm fucking out of here. Ugh. Really kind of weird matchups today. But also, Soul Cauldron, not... Uh, yeah, I, I mean, ex increased exposure to Null Rod effects is, like, actually pretty huge. This deck is, like, really teetering on the edge of, like, bad versus Null Rod, and just from the Chromoxes... Uh, and just adding additional artifacts is... What does Cauldron even do? Well, it gives you double broadside. It turns all your not broadside creatures into broadside creatures. Okay, we have excess mana, I would say. I could go really nuts and sticker, sticker, see what happens. I don't even hate that because it might. Um, it's, okay, so if I go sticker, sticker, and I roll five twice. Um, so five down to two up to five is seven. So I could major and battle cry activate. He's the model of humility. Jesus Christ. Tony. Tony, you're not allowed to do that. That's illegal. This also might bait a bolt or a plow that doesn't matter. Okay. Top. Well, better not be Terminus. <laughs> huh? All right. I guess. Sure. 
Tundra Tapland Daze You. That's unexpected. Mill Tundra. Is this like Stifle Knot? Uh, I uh, should have tapped differently, whatever. Breakfast could be breakfast. Alright, I think we just get Battle Cry and try to win as soon as possible. Yep, yeah, it's breakfast. Okay. Man, that fucking daze. <laughs> At least if they play a creature, we can Shatter Skull it. Oh my god, Urza Saga. Cannot beat that card with this deck. Okay, we can kill Illusionist. I think I pitched the spirit guy instead of crack the city. I should have attacked first in case the Mill Narc Amoeba. So we can still top deck Muxus, Ringleader, Battlecry, Broadside. Got some good draws. There's no Shadow Spear in Cephalids usually, so Saga is less, like, scary as a secondary plan. Thanks, Simeon Spirit Guide. Very cool. I will trade a Matron with this construct. I guess I'll play... Yeah, I guess I'll play the Spirit Code. Though... No, it doesn't do anything. Playing a Muxus around a day is, is more relevant than having a 2-2. Because they're going to have 3-3s. Three Alright, They did pitch a step through, and I did kill an Illusionist, so maybe... They only have, like, three Illusionists left in the deck, plus however many step throughs are left. Shuko... Oh, they didn't make a Construct. Well, that means I'm dead. This matchup also sucks. <laughs> Just the completely unnecessary Orms chant. Cool. Alright, so there is Stoneforge. I'm just gonna I just wanna see the deck. God, I wish I was playing Bile. <laughs> there is Cauldra. That's important to know. The 
Assault Cauldron would have been good. Exile the Oracle. At days is like honestly the game, right? I guess the force was the game. The force on the uh, battle cry looks just sort of like normal cephalids here. Lotus Petal's good to know about. Okay, well, two step throughs. And two Teferis. Um, so this is the classic... All my cards are good for cephalids, but none of them are good for cephalids kind of deal. Um, I think I like chalices more than blood moons on the play. I have Lawrence going right. I'm playing this sort of weird list that I have not liked very much. Um, I think I'll do ley lines on the draw. Just the warbosses just don't do very much. It's just not what the game is about. Yeah, let's just do this. It's it's possible I want the blood moons. Maybe I do, but I don't know what I would cut for them. Ringleaders. Maybe the bat the matchup is bad enough that you want ring they you just go for prison instead of. Yeah. Moxus is down to 19 flips. That's like abysmal. It's just like completely shit. Yeah. Maybe Soul Cauldron's just like worse than Goblins. Uh, on the on the play, you can we well, can chalice to shut off uh, their turn two kills, and it kind of becomes like a turn four kill for the most part, unless they lead on Saga. If you have a turn one chalice on one, um, but on the draw, chalice doesn't really do very much because they can just play a Shuko or a Nomads, and then it doesn't it stops doing anything. And so you need the ley lines to buy you time. Oh my god. I mean, if I knew the top card of my deck was Ancient Tomb, maybe. All right. Okay, I can't cast my own broadside now, but we'll draw a mana eventually. Hopefully this Blood Moon's good. Son of a bitch. <laughs> this is literally like one island. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, do I play around days? I kind of guess that days has come out on the draw. They totally didn't? Okay. Or not?
All right. I mean, I'll take eating the force, I guess. Force pitch and arc amoeba. This matchup is so bad. This is so bad for Turbo Moxus. I feel that way a bit. If your combo deck plays Force of Will and Urza's Saga, you're going to be good versus Turbo Moxus. Like, Doomsday doesn't have any way to protect itself other than counter spells, and so it can get run over by, by Turbo. Um. Chuko. Yeah, I'm dead next turn, I think. I don't even know if I have a good draw. Uh... I don't think 3 damage, three damage matters, and if they play Stoneforge Mystic and I draw a land, I will at least be able to kill the Stoneforge Mystic. I guess, well, they can't play Stoneforge Mystic without planes. They drew both islands naturally. Okay. Okay, whatever. Sort of, it's sort of irrelevant anyway, because they, I think they had the Force of Will the whole time, and they're just like, oh, I don't have to force this Blood Moon? Cool. But, like, even if they did, it's not like the broadside would have done anything. Matchup's so fucking bad. Kind of shit matches today in terms of... I don't know. I've not been feeling it. <laughs> you can say... Uh, sure... What am I doing with this hand? This is a Muxus hand, so I'm going to put back the Bombardiers. And I'm just going to go turn one Skirk. Cavern on human. Okay. Leaks are weird, like doing well versus Stompy and Scam, but then these left field decks are killing me. Yeah. Yeah, that's. That's how it goes. Okay, so the initiative. We put back our best card, which isn't thrilling, but. That's fucking dick move. <sighs> oh, hold up. I think I... Matron for Bombardiers, actually. for how I played this hand, for sure. Like, we just played, just put back Skirk, just Unga Bunga, but I think Unga Bunga is not what you're supposed to do in the blind. Chalice. Okay. Race is on. Don't hate my position in the race, though. Like, I 
don't hate it at all. Unless they kill this, then I hate it. So this becomes... So the thing is, if I kill the Dungeoneer... Yeah, I should kill the Dungeoneer. It makes my next turn less efficient, but... Uh... I need this, I need them to have five toughness, not six. So I'll probably play sticker for no... Well, actually, no. Next turn I can go attack, um, play sticker, let the trigger resolve, then sack it, kill the Archon, play uh, Legion War Boss. Unless this is a giant fourth air lingus and then I die. Fable. Okay, that's completely fine. Oh, they had to blow up their city because they didn't have a red source. That's funny. Don't they have a mountain in their hand? Kind of confusing. I guess maybe they, they want to rummage the mountain away. Battle cry, okay. Um. Yeah, all right. Menace. Is OP. Okay, let's forge because this matchup is about racing. And we do this. So it's like, ah, oh, I can only cast one spell a turn. Oh no. What a waste of a card. Then you do that. And I don't think I play. Do I block? Discard Chalice, keep Mountain. Mm -hmm. Well, now I don't block. For sure. I take five, I got a thirteen. The goad? That's weird, okay. I was going to attack anyway, I promise. I promise I was going to attack. All right. 
Maybe that was a misclick. All right, initiative's a very good matchup. Soul Cauldron, definitely not what this is about at all. War boss is merely okay. I think that's all I'm gonna do. Yeah, this thing is pretty solid. Only thing that would make it better would be a spirit guide, but like, I mean, or a pyrokinesis. At least post war games tend to be a little bit slower. So I'm gonna lead on ancient tomb. So that if they play an archon. Which is kind of unlikely after this start, but uh, play out your duels first versus initiative, which is counterintuitive against versus the rest of legacy gameplay. Okay. Spirit Guide Archon. Oh. Okay. Maybe should have just played War Boss. If it gets solitude, it's like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> uh, let's just go War Boss Bombardiers, I think. And I just, I don't think uh, Initiative can beat this board state. Back to back reanimator pairings. Blech. This, like, this matchup is why you don't see initiative that much anymore, just because its goblins is so good against it. Which is kind of funny to say, because initiative used to be, like, the bane of goblins. But then they printed this card. And this card. Yeah, yeah, goblins, yeah. Well, I mean, our the Vile Goblins matchup also became a lot better, right? I'm just gonna play this tapped and play Battlecry. I'm not sure it matters because I don't think there's really a way you can this game can go wrong. But what I was thinking is if they have like Spirit Guide, Spirit Guide, Soul Land, Giant Fourth, to not taking too much damage off of my own lands is probably the thing to be concerned about. Alright, on the board, I'm gonna play one more. I've only been streaming for just shy of two hours now. Okay. All right. I think this has satisfied my curiosity about Soul Cauldron, and that I am not particularly impressed. I think it would be better as just like third skirk and like you know whatever utility one of whether that's Pashlik Mons I'm seeing more opportunities for Crater Maker to be playable, Sting Scourger, uh Fourth Matron. 
would also be very reasonable. All right, I like this hand. Can play it a lot of different ways depending on my opponent's. Okay, wind swept you. So that means lands, depths. Oh god. Well, maybe they discard life from the loan. Okay. Keep a card on top. Better not be crop rotation. All right. Um, well, now it's an interesting kind of thing, isn't it? Because... I want my opponent to, like, if they get loam, it's loaming for a wind of teeth, so that doesn't matter. So I think I still, I could just ringleader here instead of war boss. I think that's okay. All right, that was really good. That's what I wanted. Jump palms would be good. Um, there's not enough of the mirror for me to play jump palm in Turbo Muxus. I played in Vile. Um, son of a bitch! <laughs> Come on. That uh, that is tilting as fuck. Um, I'm not going to do this because then I'm going to top deck Moxus. Alright, well. Roll, low roll, of course. Nah, that just doesn't, that just doesn't. Sick top deck. It's been kind of a tilting. It's just kind of a tilting uh, stream. Again, war boss isn't anything. Soul Cauldron should be good for Lone though, but worse than Hearse. But, and P-Fire, pumps you guys out of P-Fire range, something. Uh, yeah, I'll leave in Gemstone Caverns as wastes. Is Mana Bond ever not busted? I mean, yeah, like, it's, it's actually frequently quite bad, but mostly for the first the blue decks. Or, like, lockout, like, prison decks, I guess. I don't think this hand beats anything. I can't even dev gone a Marilage because I don't have three mana. Doing it this way is less exposed to force of vigor, then I can't top deck my way into a third mana source immediately. I think I lose the force of vigor no matter what, so I'm just not going to worry about it.
Definitely Field of the Dead? What year is it? <sighs> My hatred for Chromox is so strong. It is just the shittiest card. Like, I really do not want to throw away my Bombardier to play a Bombardier. Like, that just seems so bad. Like, I'm just gonna wait. Especially, yeah, they could have P-Fire still. Okay. No P fire. Not dead yet, so that's cool. Seems this Blood Moon actually doing its job. Fling Chrome Mox, they go to 12, then they go to 8. That's oh, not lethal. Hi, Hinty. Uh, Cauldron's been very mediocre so far, honestly. I've not been impressed. Blood Moon does the thing, I guess. On the draw, do I still want these chalices? You still kind of need them to shut off crop rotation. And you can sometimes chalice on two for loam as well. Loam and be fire. Yeah, I just don't like these cards. Yeah. So we're looking for a fast Muxus hand. Another Blood Moon hand wouldn't be bad. That is going to be quite predictable now. This is a lot of basics, which is actually nice. Um, hmm. I think I actually keep this. Not being able to be Wastelanded is pretty huge. And not being dead to Force of Acre is also pretty huge. draw. I needed to draw. I really wanted to draw a red card. I don't think playing Battlecry does anything for me. If I have to pitch one of these other cards in order to do it. Okay. Winnable? Man. It's really awkward that I need all of these red cards. <laughs> I guess I pitched the War Chief even though I don't want to.
they're going to block. Yeah, okay. Well, I don't hate my position now. Their second exploration turned out to be a dud. It's probably map for... I mean, the map for Tabernacle, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Stage. Grove. Wait. Huh? <laughs> How is that possible? They like, missed a land drop. <sighs> Can I deal lethal here? Through two blockers? If I go a broadside attack, make a token, they make Merrillage, they block two two twos, I fling for five, they go to seven, they take four. Not enough. If I play battle cry activate, they block the two battle cries, they take two five six seven. Just natural dark devs, huh? I don't know why they didn't play it last turn. Like it just it just doesn't make sense to me. The way the sequencing played out. Man. It sucks. Also we drawn an ancient tomb. We could win here. Or a spirit guide. City Traders. Oh, what a shitty league. Missed <laughs> Lethal, thanks for the follow. I guess I'll play the last one, because why not? For a pity points. Deck's not been good, though. Not been good. I guess... No, I mean, I... I, I I'm happy with the hand I kept in Game 3. I could have played the Battle Cry on Turn 1... Um, pitching War Chief. I guess that was the mistake. Yeah. I should have probably just guessed that that was probably going to happen anyway. But if I draw any other spell, then my hand becomes way better. Yeah, I think I I kind of fucked that up a little bit, but also ran pretty bad. Okay. Okay, we found a good situation for Cauldron. Yeah, it's it's for the for that. Yes. All right, this seems like a pretty clean Muxus. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Need to dodge Spirit Guide Blast. They didn't want to see. Sticker. War boss. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> totally did not need to concede. <laughs> Alright, Painter is playable. Soul Cauldron should definitely be good here. Again, we're cutting these Legion War bosses because this, these, this effect is just so not good against Saga decks. It's just so useless. Um. Ultra War Chief. Kind of between War Chief, Skirk, and a Chrome Mox. Okay. Sand's kind of slow because I'm just going to sit here until I get six mana, but I have a very direct path to six mana. And I have a Pyrokinesis to buy me the time to get there. Not gonna let my opponent tap. Uh, I don't need this spirit guide. Okay. Uh, yeah, it didn't didn't feel good. Um, it was a good pyrokinesis though. Um, <laughs> but cauldron. Very underwhelming. Um, War boss, almost indistinguishable from Rival Master, I would say, in that I cut them both the same amount of the time. I feel like the difference would be more noticeable if the first token here didn't also have to attack because I, I the all attack loss is really annoying. But it's but the reason I cut them in like some of the saga matchups, not only the fact is like the saga tokens, you know, two. Six sixes make your, you know, plan of one one you to death pretty irrelevant. But also, um, Shadow Spear just like embarrasses normal beatdown. Um, if the first war boss token didn't have to attack, meaning that you don't have to run face first into a creature holding a Shadow Spear, then. I'd be more interested in it. But, like, I mean, Rabble, Rabble was, like, the same. Rabble... There may have been a situation where Rabble would have just been straight up dealing more damage, which is probably just more relevant. So... Yeah, very... Very medium minus on uh, these two... These two's performance today. Holy shit, I lost... I lost so many points. Not my points. My meaningless points. Um, yeah. I think that's that's enough of that experiment for me. Uh, Hearse I'm more into as a main deck card because it's, uh, it's actually more effective as Graveyard Hate. Uh, and it, it becomes a, a, a beat stick instead of doing nothing unless you have something else. Like, obviously you need, you need two power to crew it, but that's like a pretty low requirement. Um, and it like, it accrues value over time, even if you're not doing anything. Whereas, 
cauldron only accrues value over time if you've got stuff. You know, you can't, you know, cruise hearse, you just, you know, make it bigger and bigger, and then you have like a 10 10, and then you top deck a creature and you attack for 10. Uh, cauldron doesn't really do that. So I think I will cut these. I do like hearse just because the format has so much graveyard stuff in it right now. Saga decks are kicking my ass, uh, but that's normal. War bosses were not particularly good, so I'll just go back to Rabble Master. And I'm going to go three Rabble Master because they just haven't been good in general. And I'll go up to four Matron, I think. This looks better. Yep, the rest of the deck was fine. All right, I'm gonna call it there. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for, for checking in. Uh, let's find somebody to raid. Um. Oh, people playing. Oh, right, there's this. Right, the Sunday challenge. Um, who do I want to read? Sylvia. Check out the Patreon um, if you're interested in more guides and stuff. I know that's like the worst pitch ever, but <laughs> check out the Patreon. It, it's good. There's good content on there. Good writing. See you next time.